Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar summary of new standards. My name is Michael Beers, and today my colleague Trevor Mankus and I are going to discuss the new versions of the standards recently released by CDISC. If you have a question at any point during the presentation, please use the chat icon on the left side of your application window. We will answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. For questions that we're unable to get to during the webinar, we'll try to provide answers on the Q&A section of our website where we will post the slides of the webinar. Just as a quick introduction, I'm a consultant or SME here at Pinnacle 21. I work with assisting our clients in using Pinnacle 21 Enterprise best practices, maintaining validation rules and versions of the standards. I also spend a lot of time working at the FDA on a number of projects, such as working as a data fitness analyst on the Jumpstart project for CEDAR and a similar project for CBER. First, I'm going to discuss the changes made by CDISC in the new version of STTM and its corresponding implementation guide version 3.4 as well as the conformance rules that go along with the release. Then Trevor will discuss the new Atom Implementation Guide 1.3 and associated documents. Then we'll take questions at the end. My portion will focus on mostly what the technical details changes are of the new releases with the intention of helping users eventually up version. Therefore, I'll focus on exactly what has been added deleted or changed. I won't spend much time dis discussing the reasons for these changes, however. Here's just a quick summary of the more recent versions of STTM and the implementation guides that accompany them. The new version of STTM version 2.0 corresponds to implementation guide 3.4. This is a major release. A significant amount of reorganization and restructuring has been done in this release. The previous version of SDTM, version 1.8, corresponds to Send IG Animal Rule. So many users may not be familiar with this version of SDTM unless you work on non-clinical studies. Therefore, when checking for differences in the standard, we need to compare 2.0 to 1.7, the last version of the standard associated with an SDTM IG, but also account for anything that may have been added to 1.8 for Send IG Animal Rule that could also apply to clinical studies. Okay, so let's take a look at the new version of STTM and its implementation guide. Five new domains were added in STTM IG 3.4. The first three, biospecimen events, biospecimen findings, and related specimens are copied from that older provisional pharmacogenomics and genetics guidance, or STTMIG PGX, from 2015 that's being retired. The cell phenotype domain is new and the genomics finding, findings domain replaces the old PF domain from that STTMIG PGX. RELSPEC is also a new special purpose domain listed in STTM 2.0. And there is also a new challenge agent characterization domain that was added to STTM 1.8 for use with Send IG Animal Rule, although it is technically allowed for clinical trials if needed. One domain has been removed from STTM IG 3.4, the morphology domain. This was mentioned in the STTM IG 3.3 as scheduled to be deprecated, and it now has been in version 3.4. The different body system domains should be used instead of MO now. There were a few domain changes in STTM 3.4. Domain labels were changed for the DA and TS domains. DA was changed from drug accountability to product accountability. And TS was changed to remove the word information. Domain structure was changed for five domains. I'm not going to read these. It's mostly just a change in wording, except for the SC subject characteristics domain where per visit was added. Sixteen new variables were added to SDTM IG 3.4 for various domains. You can see the distinct variables listed here. And then the last column 
list what domains these variables have been added to in the IG. Thirty new domain specific variables meaning you can only use them in one specific domain and not other domains were added to SDTM. The usage restrictions column in SDTM 2.0 is where you can see which domain the variable is limited to. Two of these variables were introduced in SDTM 1.8, the RFC start date and RFC end date for the DM domain but these are related to that challenge agent characterization domain released for send IG animal rule. The other 28 variables were introduced in SCTM 2.0. Most are related to the new CP, GF, rel spec domains, but there were four variables added to AE and one variable added to IS. There were also 11 new variables added to SDTM 2.0, but they're not listed in the implementation guide. Reason test perform was introduced in um, SDTM 2.0, and but it's just not clear why this wasn't modeled in any domain in the IG, um, at least at the moment. The others were introduced in SDTM 1.8 and are more applicable for send IG animal rule. Two of them, the ones in gray, are only for use in send, so they cannot be used in clinical trials. There are also a number of existing SDTM variables, ones that are not new to this release of 2.0, that have been added to certain domains in the implementation guide. Users familiar with Pinnacle 21 metadata will realize that this means that these variables previously had a core of model permissible, but now are sort of upgraded to permissible, expected, or required, since they've been listed in the IG for those domains. The usage for two variables has been expanded a little bit. The method variable was previously only able to be used in findings domains, but now you can use it in one interventions domain, the EX domain, but only for non-clinical studies. So it doesn't affect clinical trials. SP dev ID has been expanded for use in CO, RELREC, and the subqual domains. There's also been 15 variables removed from the implementation guide. These variables are modeled in SDTM 3.3, but now are no longer listed in SDTM IG 3.4. For P21 metadata, this means that these variables will be sort of downgraded from a core of permissible, expected, or required down to model permissible. And note that for many of these, there is no explanation in the revision history or the assumptions for why this was done. For the FT eval and QS eval, the usage restrictions column explains this update. And for LB, STR, EFC, the revision history does mention this change. Another variable, APID, had its usage changed from previously being listed as general observation class to now limited to the associated persons and relationship domains. Something that happens with each new release of the standards are that changes are made to existing information. Most of the time there are reasons for these additions, deletions, or changes. However, sometimes the changes do not seem to have a necessary reason. This is problematic because when standards are repeatedly changed, either for reasons that aren't critical, by mistake, or just for minor tweaking, then the result is always changing standards, which means that there are no real actual standards. But I'll discuss some of these changes that occurred now. Um, there are 10 variables in the implementation guide that have a different label than the previous version. There's also seven variable labels that were changed in SDTM 2.0. Variables that previously had a format of ISO 8601 now have a more specific format. It's now differentiated between 
ISO 8601 date time and ISO 8601 duration. I'm not really sure why the evaluation interval is the only one listed as duration or interval when the other ones are just duration though. Um, there's also a minor change that occurred to the wording for the ISO 21090 null flavor code list. Code lists or formats have been changed for a number of variables in the implementation guide as well. For most, it's just that a code list has been added. But for two variables, this isn't the case. For the country variable, the ISO 3166 format was removed. And for the FT method variable, the code list was changed from method to QRS method. Variable role has been changed for 10 variables in STTM 2.0. Role isn't really used that much. For example, it's not listed in the defined XML or anything, but uh, users still may need to be aware of this while maintaining standards. For three of the variables, party ID, link, and root, the role was not also corrected in the implementation guide. So now there's a discrepancy between um, the model and the, the IG. There's also one variable ISCAT where the role was corrected in um, STTM IG 3.4. Variable core was changed for seven variables in the IG. Two variables, DS, DY, and MI baseline flag were previously expected but are now permissible. Four variables, DS, STDY, FADTC and last observation bef before treatment flag in MI and QS were previously permissible, but now are expected. And then one variable visit in the TV domain was previously permissible, but now it's a required variable. Variable order was changed as well for two variables in the IG. ECG beat number was changed since the role for the variable was changed to identifier, so it was moved up in the domain. I couldn't find a reason why MS test detail was changed. I didn't see it listed in the revision history or anything. In the IG for each domain, there is an assumptions section. One of the assumptions lists variables that would generally not be used in that domain. This list of variables was changed for eight domains in the IG. It's mostly that they removed variables from the list in 3.4, meaning that you are not specifically advised against using them anymore. For FT, two variables, position and location, were added to the list, but they weren't there in version 3.3. There are some differences between what is listed in the IG and what is listed in STTM 2.0. One of them is that the ISO 3166 format was removed from country in the IG, but the model still lists it. Another difference, one I mentioned in an earlier slide, is that there are now differences in variable role between the IG and the model. This appears to just be a mistake, I think. There isn't much of an impact with actual submission data, but maintaining standards is difficult when discrepancies exist. Okay, so with new releases of CETA standards and implementation guides, we get new releases of conformance rules as well. So I'll discuss what is new and what has changed for these new rules. There were three conformance rules that have been removed from previous IG versions. These three rules were previously assigned to SDTM IG 3.2 or 3.3 or both, but were removed in this new release. One of the rules, CG 0292, is redundant with other rules. The other two rules were retired because new rules were created to replace them. There were four rules added to, for STTM IG versions 3.2 and 3.3 in this new release. Most of these rules were added for STTM IG 3.4 and then just applied 
to the older versions of the IG as well. The biggest update was the addition of 59 new rules for STTM IG 3.4. These can be broken down into the following categories. There were 36 new conformance rules that are already covered by existing Pinnacle 21 rules. There's five new rules that will result in new Pinnacle 21 rules. 17 new conformance rules may not be able to be implemented. And then one new conformance rule appears to be an identical duplicate with another rule. Here are the 36 new rules that are already covered by existing Pinnacle 21 rules. 24 of the rules are for send specific variables not allowed in STTM. Pinnacle 21 handles this by denoting them in the standard as send only. And then we have one rule that is used to flag if any of these are used in a clinical trial. The other new rules, the ones in the table on the slide are covered by different Pinnacle 21 rules, either as is now, or we may need to make minor tweaks to the rule or the standard to get them to, um, to, to cover this update. And I listed the corresponding P21 rules in the glass column of this table. There are five new conformance rules that will result in new Pinnacle 21 rules. Um, three are for send-only domains that shouldn't be used in clinical trials. The other two are just new rules that we need to add. These are the 17 new conformance rules that may not be able to be implemented. The reasons for this is um, either there's a, a vague condition or rule, or the, the rule is checking for things where manual or human judgment might be needed or there's just no certain way to reliably program the check to get accurate findings. And I listed some of my reasons or concerns in the last column of the table. There are a few issues with some of the conformance rules as well. CG0637 lists RPDY in the variable column, but the rule references NOM LBO. Um, so it, it seems like the rule is meant to check RPDY, um, so probably just assume that and, and update the rule for that. TG0641 is checking that age text is not present in the DM dataset. However, when we look at SDTM version 2.0, we don't see anything in the usage restrictions column for age text. Uh, Perhaps there was discussion of maybe making that a send-only variable, but um, again, it's not in the usage restrictions comp, so it's not really clear what this rule is based on. And then CG0661, it just looks like an identical duplicate of CG0091. And then there are... Um, some non-clinical domains, SJ, TJ, TP, where a conformance rule was created to, to flag that, um, to make sure they're not used in clinical studies, but there was a, there is another domain, TT, that uh, appears to be missed. So that, I think it, that should have been another rule. Um, so maybe that'll be uh, added, in, added in another release of the conformance rules, hopefully. Checking for differences in conformance rules between this release and the previous release does result in some findings. This slide shows that for some rules, rule version was changed, but it appears nothing else was changed, so it's unclear why the rule version was updated. There are four rules where class was changed. CG 0017 now excludes AP when previously it did not. CG0082 and, and 0083 used to apply to findings domains, but now do not. And then CG0563 looks like a correction. It was previously RND and now it's FND for findings. The 
one rule has domain changed. CG0084 used to be limited to just AE and LB. Now it applies to all domains. The variable column was changed for three rules. These rules all used to apply to the visit variable according to the variable column. Now CG0032 applies to visit DY and the other two rules apply to visit num. And then lastly, two rules have condition and rule changed. For CG0082, rule and condition were switched. And for CG0148, tweaks were made to both the condition and the rule. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Trevor to discuss the atom portion of the webinar. All right, thank you, Mike. Um, hi, everyone, and uh, <clears throat> I'll give a brief introduction for those who I haven't met uh, over the years. So I'm a product leader here at P21, um, been an active member of the CDISC team since 2009, and I'm currently one of the leads of the Atom Conformance Rules sub-team who's responsible for publishing and authoring the conformance rules for the Atom standard. Prior to being at Pinnacle 21, I was involved at, um, in industry across pharma and zero since 2007. So I'm going to be talking um, about the changes that are introduced with Atom Implementation Guide version 1.3 and the various uh, associated documents that were recently released as well with that um, in that release package. So that release package was published um, at the end of November and it contained Atom 1.3, I'm sorry, Atom IG 1.3, um, an update for the occurrence data structure. So now we're up to 1.1. And then we have brand new documents now for NCA, which stands for non-compartmental analysis and medical devices. So the Atom standard now has support for medical devices. In that release package, um, there was also a PDF document titled Considerations When Using Atom 2.1. Um, I, I highly suggest this be read when that release package is downloaded. It, it basically describes um, any additional developments um, since the original publication date of the uh, Atom 2.1 document, which was in December of 2009. So, um, it's quite old, uh, so it's definitely worth a good read. One of the highlights um, or, or the big new features that are part of this release package is that Atom now has additional um, classes or data set structures. So we have device level analysis data set, also known as ADDL. We have medical device OCCDS and medical device BDS. And we also have um, a newly introduced concept that came out with Define XML 2.1, which is subclasses. Um, so they have made their way into the Atom standard now. We have subclasses of adverse event, time to event, non-compartmental analysis, and medical device time to event. These are the actual terms from the um, defined control terminology that uh, these subclasses should use. So before we get into the specifics, um, I wanted to point out a table that's at the top of the various implementation guides um, that Adam has published over the years, table 1311. And this really outlines the, the document applicability for all of the uh, supplemental files that are out there and how they apply to the various versions of the implementation guide. So as an example, you'll see that um, the, the fourth row down, the Atom data structure for adverse event analysis. Well, that was written when IG 1.0 was, was uh, published and has since been superseded by OCCDS version 1.0. Uh, that being said, you'll also see that OCCDS version 1.1 um, is also applicable still um, along with OCCDS 1.0. So both versions of the occurrence data structure appear to be valid as of IG 1.3. 
So this is a really good table to, to pull up and reference if you ever have any concerns or questions about um, which data structures are applicable to, to which versions of the IG that you're going to submit. So let's dig a little bit into um, the specifics of what's new with Atom Implementation Guide 1.3. Um, this is actually a really easy slide to go through because there's not much, uh, and I'm not trying to take away anything from the, the CDISC Atom team that worked to publish this, um, but it really is just a minor update. Um, a couple clarifications, a few modifications, and four corrections. All of these are very trivial um, and really just add additional um, clarity to the guidance and, and text and examples that are in the document to further convey the the original um, purpose of, of some of these things so the takeaway here is ig 1.3 has zero new variables uh, zero modified attributes for for existing variables however as i said earlier we do have new data structures and subclasses Um, and so those sub those those new data structures really are introduced in these uh, associated documents. So I mentioned earlier what they are. We have um, four of them. We have um, ADNCA, which is introduced in the ADNCA 1.0 document, and again that stands for non-compartmental analysis. And then in our first iteration of medical device implementation guide for Adam, we've also introduced um, ADDL which is um, very similar to ADSL. We have a medical device BDS and a medical device OCCDS, um, both of which are versions or variations of the, the root structures BDS and OCCDS. So let's take a second and um, you know, take, take a look at how enterprise can help really figure out what's different between these versions. because I know that we've we've hit you with a lot of information. Um, you know, STTM 3.4 looks like it had a lot of additions, um, and and I think this is really important to show you guys um, how easy it is to really see comparisons from one version to another using Enterprise. So in our tool, um, if you go to the metadata area and select standards, you can select the standard that you want to compare to. And then we'll perform that comparison for you and tab by tab we'll show you um, anything that's new deprecated or modified since uh, in, in between those two versions um, so you'll see here in this atom example we added the new data structures and core has changed for a bunch of variables between 1.3 and 1.2 um, so this is a really nice tool to just get kind of a an overview in terms of what's changed how do i have to um, update my company standards to be compliant with the new version. So let's dig in a little bit to um, the specific supplemental documents. The first one we'll cover is going to be occurrence data structure. Um, what's new or what's changed since the last release? So really we have three buckets here. Um, the first is a bunch of core um, metadata has been refined in 1.01 um, things that were permissible are now conditional or things that were conditional are now required uh, based off of subclass and we'll get into the specifics there the 1.1 document also introduces a new naming convention um, so this is a really useful um, standard naming convention for scenarios where um, your input sdtm data sets Maybe there's two or more that you're trying to set together to create um, your atom. And you have multiple variables with the same suffix, but different prefixes. So in this example, adverse event body system and medical history body system. Um, you're pulling those two data sets together and you're not modifying that uh, those variables at all. You can combine those into a single variable called ubodsys. And again, that u prefix stands for unmodified. Um, so that's this is really our first attempt at trying to simplify the, the process of pulling in multiple input data sets to help reviewers understand what these variables mean for traceability. And then we also have new variables that were introduced in OCCDS 1.1 as well. 
So let's look at that first bucket, um, the different uh, changes in core. Um, so one of the things that was introduced in this document was that um, in the in the tables that show variable name, label, um, core, there's a new column now that says core for this subclass or for subclass of adverse event because ADAE is um, an occurrence data structure. Well, certain variables have different requirements um, in terms of expected, permissible, um, conditionally required, things like that for adverse event versus just generic OCCDS. So all of the MEDRA dictionary coding variables, things like um, decode, HLT, LLT, all of those are now required when the subclass is adverse event. Um, so we'll need to have rules that trigger that say um, these variables need to be present when the subclass is adverse event. Um, likewise, the who drug dictionary coding variables are marked as not used for adverse event subclass. Um, that makes sense because these are variables you would not need um, when you're talking about um, adverse event and MEDRA. And then we also have a bunch of timing variables, things like start date, end date. Um, those are required for adverse event subclass as well. So again, the general core of these um, hasn't been touched, but we did refine it to say that they're now required or, or not used in these specific subclass cases. I mentioned that we added variables. Um, there's five new variables. We have um, A decode Y for dictionary derived terms. We have two variables for on treatment flags and two variables for treatment emergent flags. Um, and again, these lowercase index placeholders are just that. Um, you know, lowercase Y stands for one through 99, um, XX for zero, one to 99. Those are described in the Atom implementation guide. All right, let's jump over to um, the new ADNCA document. Uh, so the first question many of you might be asking is, what is it? What is NCA? Um, I've never heard of this before. So um, really NCA has to do with pharmacokinetics, um, also known as PK. And that and that really is the, the study of the effect of the body on uh, a drug or treatment. Um, and when you think, when you talk about PK, um, there's parameters that, that go into this, right? So like uh, the, the, there's a lot of mathematical methods that are used to calculate these parameters. And one of the more common ones is, is non-compartmental analysis. Um, it's used to analyze drug concentration data. And the question is, is why? Why do I need this? Um, well, when you, when you submit to a regulatory body, one of the things that they might ask for or expect um, when there's treatment drugs involved is the input data for these parameter calculations so they can verify that, that what's there is correct. So the NCA document describes basically what the BDS data set should look like specifically for this purpose. Um, it's, it's basically BDS plus a bunch of new variables. Um, so you'll, you'll want to start by, you know, the, the typical things that we're used to, variables from ADSL and BDS, your demographics, you know, your, your subjects, your sites, age, sex, race, treatments, and then your timing things like period, visit, um, start date, end date, time points. Um, obviously, you need your param, param code since it's BDS and AVAL. One of the nuances with NCA is that um, there's three variables that have a stronger value for core now. So dose A and dose U are permissible in BDS. They are now required for NCA, so they have to be there. And likewise, um, a visit is conditionally required in BDS, is now required in NCA, so that also has to be there. So you'll need to add these three variables to your NCA data set as well. And then I didn't include a screenshot of this table because it, it's pretty big, um, but if you were to look at the NCA 1.0 document and go to table 421, there's a whole list there of new standard NCA variables that can be used. Um, each has its specific purpose. So this covers things like exclusion flags, cohorts, um, analyte dosing and volumes, weights, all the things that are specific to 
um, be able to calculate these, these PK parameters. All right, let's jump over to um, Atom Medical Devices version 1.0. And again, we'll start with what is it? So this is an implementation guide that covers the standard structure for what a medical device data set or, or set of data sets might look like. It's needed for trials where medical devices are used. And this implementation guide covers the three new classes, um, ADDL, which again is um, device level analysis data set. Um, we have MDBDS and MDTTE, which are flavors of the existing BDS structure and MD OCCDS, which is a flavor of the existing OCCDS structure. Um, so when we talk about medical devices, specifically for Adam, um, for, for those who don't know, so medical devices are, are kind of like subjects in the sense that they're given a unique identifier. Um, so subjects get USUBJ ID, medical devices get SP dev ID. Um, and medical device studies can be analyzed by device alone or with regard to a subject. Um, and so that's actually really important because for, for non-medical device studies, ADSL is a required data set. But when we talk about medical device studies, it becomes conditionally required. So you only need to include ADSL in your medical device study if subject information is collected and needs to be reported. Um, and in general, when you when you see or hear of the new structure ADDL, you could think of it as very similar to ADSL. Again, ADSL is going to be for your subject level information. ADDL is going to be for your device level. So that's kind of a crash course um, into the the new associated documents that came out with Adam. Um, we have it looks like five or six minutes to go into some questions. So I'm going to jump over to questions and. Uh, it, it looks like one of the more common questions, again, there was a lot of information thrown at you here, is when will these slides be available? Um, so again, we will be posting these slides. You don't need to frantically be taking notes. Um, they'll get posted to our website, and when they do, you'll get notified through email that, that they've been posted. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take questions that are specific for, for the Adam portion, Mike, and then we'll switch over to you. So the, the first question here is, um, when will agencies start accepting IG 1.3? <clears throat> so that's a good question. Um, the first thing we should look at really is uh, FDA, right? So FDA is usually ahead of the other agencies in terms of um, rate of adoption of, of new new standards. So let's look at them. Uh, and if, if we were to open up their data standards catalog today, um, we would see that 1.2 of the implementation guide isn't even on there yet. So um, we're a little bit ahead in terms of CDISC releasing documents, um, but I can give you a best practice recommendation um, from an SME perspective, which would be um, as you're you know, developing your data sets and putting your study together, um, I would suggest following the most recently published versions of these implementation guides um, and when it comes time for submission, then of course you would submit using the most recently accepted version. I think that makes the most sense. And the reason I say that is because the CDISC teams in general do a very good job at making sure that these incremental updates to the IGs are backwards compatible. So what that means is, you know, if you were to follow 1.3, sure you might be borrowing some variables for some new concepts, um, but all of the variables that are existing are still compliant to, to IG 1.1. So you, you'll always be in good shape for submission, I think, if you follow that recommendation. Next question, um, when will P21 add validation support for these new standards? And this kind of covers SDTM and Adam. Um, so our team is working actively on developing rules to support these. I can speak to Adam um, alone. So there's about 85 new rules that need to be developed for these various documents across NCA and medical devices, OCCDS. Uh, we are testing and, and working on those. 
course, the first step is to put the standards together. And you saw, you saw that there's a lot of new metadata. Um, once we have an engine that's stable and a set of validation rules that we feel confident in, um, we will release that to our enterprise customers. I will say one of the challenges associated with this specific set of rules is that, as you saw, um, many of them are specific to the value of subclass. And so that's a new concept, relatively new concept for industry. Um, and so we're working on a way to support that. But again, as once that engine is available, we'll push it out to our enterprise customers. Um, all right, I'm going to I'm going to step out and let Mike take over the rest of the questions. Okay. We have a few questions on the deprecation of the MO domain. One is why was MO deprecated and what do we do with the data that has tra traditionally been mapped there? Um, for the reason why, I'm just going to direct you to the IG. There is a good explanation of, um, I guess, what was planned originally and why that changed. But again, you can find that in the IG. Um, for what should be done with the data that used to go to MO, you would use the specific body system domain that applies to your data. So um, these body system domains were introduced in STTM IG 3.3. And um, so you should just use move to using those domains. Another question about MO is, if MO is included as a domain, in a study following STTM IG 3.4, will it be validated by enterprise community? And the answer is yes, it will. It, it It's just gonna be done, I guess, as a, a custom domain. However, we we might possibly introduce some kind of warning or a rule to to warn you that, you know, this domain has been deprecated and you should be using a, a body system domain instead. Uh, another MO question, is it allowable to include MO in a study that was created using STTM IG 3.4 if we use define 2.1's multiple standards capability and say that this one domain comes from 3.3? That's an interesting point. That's an interesting way, I guess, to get around um, the deprecation. I, I don't think I would advise doing that, though. I think you would just want to move to the new CDIS guidance of um, using the appropriate body system domains and leaving MO behind. Uh, and then maybe just one more question. There's one about epoch. Why is epoch listed as a permissible variable? In the IG, when the TCG states that it should be included for a number of domains? Um, well, epoch um, is requested in the TCG. That's more of a regulatory um, requirement or expectation. As for why CDIS doesn't um, upgrade the core to expected, I think it's more of that um, since it's a regulatory requirement um, and CDIS standards are not necessarily only used for regulatory submissions, I, I think that's more of the reason. But um, our recommendation would be that you would absolutely want to give the regulatory agencies what they request and expect. So um, that's how I would handle that. Okay, um, I believe we're out of time. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending our webinar. And uh, here's our contact information if there are any additional questions.